Welcome to Fox Souls Black Report. We give you the latest in black news, views, and opinions. I'm Romeo. Hey there, I'm Brooke. I'm Demi. And Melissa, she's out today. On today's report, Dante Wright's family demands more severe charges for Minneapolis ex-cop who killed him. Chicago authorities released body-worn camera footage of 13-year-old Adam Toledo and the family of Tamir Rice pleads with the DOJ to reopen probe into his death. We're going to show you why U.S. Congresswoman Maxine Waters told Jim Jordan to shut his mouth. There's an update on the federal slavery reparations bill. In 2021, a California city has a noose on its logo, but it is coming down. And one New York City mayoral candidate gets some star-studded endorsements. Plus, Naomi Campbell, named as ambassador to Kenya. TSU names NFL Hall of Famer as new head football coach. And Will Smith and director Antoine Fuqua stand up for voting rights. So, mates, we have all that and so much more. So if you're ready, it's our voice and our truth. Let's get it. To me, this reeks of conflict of interest. Do we know if he actually waved a gun? We only hear one side of the story. This just really did make me feel good that the justice system did what they needed to. We're going to keep following this story, and we will have the latest for you. Thanks for joining us, Soulmates. Here are your top stories. Indianapolis police have identified the FedEx mass shooting suspect as a 19-year-old employee named Brandon Hull. Officers say he shot and killed eight people overnight and hurt at least five others before taking his own life at a FedEx facility near the airport. The IPD deputy chief says it all started when the gunman got to the facility and started randomly shooting in the parking lot before going inside the building and continuing the shooting. 30 people have been killed in mass shootings in this country in just this past month. You know, there was a big drop in mass shootings in the U.S. in 2020 after the pandemic began, but the Gun Violence Archive says there have been 147 mass shootings so far in 2021, and they consider a mass shooting four or more people. Mm -hmm. uh, the chief also in this presser said, the press conference where you know, we have this information, said that we might not ever know why, fully know mm -hmm. why this happened. And, you know, that, that was strong. Also, CNN is reporting that the suspect was known to federal and local authorities and that a relative reached out to authorities mm -hmm. warning about that person's potential for violence. Mm, yeah. Interesting. That was I'm pretty sorry. powerful. I'll let you go, Demi. Go ahead. No, I was just going to add in, too, um, that I read today that he also was an ex- uh, a FedEx employee. I don't know if you said that, Brooke. Um, but also, they say that this happened in less than two minutes, that the entire shooting happened in 90 seconds. And I want to read a tweet, a very powerful tweet that I saw on Twitter today. Um, this is someone that I just follow on Twitter, and they said this. They said, we interrupt the coverage of the shooting of a 13-year-old boy that interrupted the coverage of a traffic stop shooting of a 20-year-old man that interrupted the coverage of a Derek Chauvin trial for the killing of George Floyd for the news of, a, of eight people killed at a FedEx facility in Minneapolis. And this story just really made me, you know, made me realize that there's a severe problem not only with uh, guns in, in America, but also it's just a lot that we are, are are putting on our minds right now. I mean, I feel just so overwhelmed with just so much tragic news. You're and right, Demi. Yeah. It is just so much. It really is. And you think about it, what we've all gone through just on a mental level with the pandemic, mm -hmm. right? And during that time, we have to understand, gun sales shot through the roof, right? Through the whole time when Trump was in office, through the pandemic, people wanted to protect themselves at homes and things like that. And so some cities and some states you can get a gun and not even buy bullets because mm -hmm. they're out. I'm saying all that to say there are a lot of weapons out there that are in mm -hmm. the wrong hands. And unfortunately we wake up to this news this morning and there was a hotel right next, not too far from the FedEx, mm -hmm. and there were families going there and you saw two sides of the story. You mm -hmm. saw families that were breaking out in tears because they found out their loved one was actually safe. Mm -hmm. And then you got the other family members that got the sad news that they lost someone. So what are these companies going to do to protect people from going inside? Or how is that handled? Mm -hmm. Like I don't even you know, know, Romeo. Something else that is pretty horrifying when you talk about the families being next door at the hotel. Yeah. Because of the policy at this job, like many other jobs, people can't have their cell phones. Mm. So they weren't even able to contact. Like, that's why that those waits were even more emotional. Yeah. People on the inside weren't even able to call their friends and family and say they're okay. Yeah. It's, it's terrifying. This is it very is. terrifying. It is. It definitely is. So um, another trending story for you guys. Dante Wright's family joined community leaders in demanding more severe charges against the white former police officer who fatally shot the young black man in a Minneapolis suburb where hundreds of protesters again filled the streets in front of the police station. Former Brooklyn Center police officer Kim Potter was charged with second-degree manslaughter in Sunday shooting of Wright, who's 20 years old, who was 20 years old, excuse me, during a traffic stop. Potter was released on a 
$100,000 bond hours after her Wednesday arrest. Her next court appearance is set for May 17th. Um, I want to bring up something, actually, that... Um, Brooke and I were having this conversation about George Floyd, actually, and she reminded me that there is no real justice for George Floyd. And so this made me actually uh, want to bring up something that Dante Wright's mom said, um, and she's been saying in her press conferences that everyone keeps saying justice. She says there's never going to be justice for us. Yep. Justice would bring our son home. So justice isn't even a word to me. She says all I want right now is accountability, 100% accountability. So I want us to also, because words are very powerful as well, so when we say justice for Dante Wright, uh, just like George Floyd, there real, there really is no justice because it can't bring their lives back. Um, and this is just another tragic story. And um, I also was watching that there are protests still going on in Minneapolis. And of course, we'll keep you guys posted on everything going on in Minneapolis as well. Yeah, I feel really strongly about the just just wanting to be, you know, just do whatever we can to not be reductive, I guess you could say, to yes. the families of people who, you know, their biggest thing is they everything that's happening, they, they want their family back. Yes, exactly. They want this to have not have happened. And there is no justice when somebody is dead, you yeah. know, and I, you know, also out there together, it just kind of brings everything full circle. Philando Castile's family out there, mm -hmm. obviously George Floyd's family we mentioned that out there, all of these families out there together and realizing that these shootings all happened within, you know, miles of each yes. other. Mm -hmm. These three families within miles of each mm -hmm. other. Also, um, something they were bringing up in effort to, to kind of point out, hey, listen, we want more charges. You all remember the shooting Mohammed Noor, mm -hmm. a black, a Somali American police officer who was charged and convicted of third degree murder and manslaughter for killing a white woman, mm. a, a former officer there. And uh, so that's the biggest example his family has been given saying, we've seen it before, yeah, you can do it. Have. And I think I heard his mom speak that she actually had a chance to, to view when uh, Potter was in court and mm -hmm. how she waved at the camera and how she just, it just ripped her heart apart again. Seeing this lady able to walk and still live and breathe and do that to the camera, like, or do you not have any remorse for what mm -hmm. you did? Mm -hmm. And Ben Crump also uh, tweeted something that was very powerful as well. He ended his tweet with hashtag Two Americas. He mm -hmm. brought up the fact that um, there was a white man who I don't know if you guys saw this video. Yeah, he was resisting it. arrest, mm -hmm. beating a guys. He beat the cop with his own baton, drove off in the police car, and he brought up the fact that there was no guns, there was no taser in sight, and then he used the hashtag. Hashtag to Americas. I mean, it really makes you think about how we're putting to rest so many black men just alone this week. And you have a white man who literally got it away in the police car, right? And beat them with their own baton. It is just, it, it's terrifying. Brooke, that's the best word that I can describe it right now. Yeah, that is so true. Well, our third story mm. about someone who lost their life to guns. Authorities released body-worn camera footage that shows an officer making a split-second decision to fire a single shot to kill 13-year-old Adam Toledo after the boy is seen holding a handgun at the end of a foot chase, according to police. Chicago's Mayor Lori Lightfoot released a joint statement with Toledo's family and held a press conference Thursday afternoon, calling the video difficult to watch. The Chicago Police Department would not answer questions about the shooting, but released a slow down video that highlights a portion of the interaction between the officer and Toledo. The Toledo family attorney said the family is currently exploring next steps and did not rule out potential legal action against the officer or the city of Chicago. Being a father of a son, I understand what this family is going through. But then all day yesterday and even today, you had people on social media, you had people going on different networks talking about, well, here's a 13-year-old that was out at 2.50 in the morning that allegedly had a tattoo, a fresh tattoo of a gang on his arm, and they were shooting at someone else. I'm not trying to hear that. Yeah. I'm not trying to hear that. No. This 13-year-old hands was clearly up. He did not turn like this sideways. They were up. And you're trained to do better and be better. So I don't want to buy that story. And it just hurts me that someone goes out and throw that out already. A lot of people have been saying that, like, the frustration at people rationalizing a killing of a child. 13-year-old is a child. Yes. And also, listen, nobody is saying that there's not a responsibility of a parent to, to know where your kid is, blah, 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 blah. Of course there is. But also, kids do things they're not supposed to do. Yes. And the problem is that we only hold poor kids, black and brown kids, accountable. Mm -hmm. Because all of us... Know a rich white kid who has gotten out of some serious trouble. Yeah. Rich hmm. kids also are out in the streets at 2 a.m. Yeah. It happens. They're also able, they have the privileges of cleaning up their wrongdoings. Mm -hmm. This happens in every family. Yeah. It happens in every neighborhood, all through, it all crosses all races. 
all different class lines, Agreed. everybody, there are always kids who do things they are not supposed to do. There are always kids who do things their parents don't want them to do. Yeah. Some families are able to get them out of trouble. Yeah. Some families are not. And so it is not fair to say, well, where were his parents? That's not fair because it happens to a lot of people. And it doesn't end Nick like that. You're right. Y you know, it, 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 that's just been frustrating. And too, a lot of people are calling for Lori Lightfoot to step down. They wanted to resign because something she, you know, she kind of came out and said she was focused on the guns and she wanted to get the guns out of there. And people were saying, hey, listen, that's not the issue here. Yeah. yeah. It's really not, Brooke. I'm really glad you brought that up. You know, when I live in Los Angeles, um, I am always going to ride for my city, you know, to the to the end, right? But um, this is a situation, you know, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor Lori Lightfoot has been very problematic. So many things that she's done wrong as the mayor and some as someone from Chicago who doesn't live there but has family, my, my entire family lives there. She's done so many problematic things that she does need to go. Um, she actually made a statement the other day, um, you know, pretty much uh, taking up for police officers saying that, you know, police officers go their entire uh, lifetime and never have to touch a gun. But this was when this happens, it's very traumatizing. And people in Chicago, people around the world were like, traumatizing? Hmm. You're going to tell me that yeah. it was traumatizing to reach for your gun and shoot a 13-year-old hmm. boy? I mean, just, Lori Lightfoot, sorry, sis, but I, it might be your time. It hmm. might just you know, be your time. You know, I also want to bring up the fact that, like, this is a, an important story, right, to point out as journalists how we cannot be PR for police departments. Hmm. Because the police knew what was on that body cam video. Yes. And the initial story was that this little boy had yes. his, had a gun in his hand. Yes. And then the video showed his hands up and now the story is, well, he had a gun milliseconds before he mm -hmm. had his hands up. And, you know, and uh, that brings us to, we were talking about what happened in Knoxville, Tennessee. We didn't get to it on the show, but a 17 year old was shot and killed by a school resource officer. And the initial story was the resource officer was shot by the 17 year old's gun. And that's why the 17 year old was shot and killed by the police officer. The latest information in that story is that the police officer's weapon shot both people. So the police officer accidentally shot himself and also shot and killed the teenager. And so it's important that we investigate everything a police officer says because that's our job, to yeah. tell the full story. We're not PR for anybody. Yes. Yeah, and I want everybody, I wish everybody would think about that when we report what police say. Absolutely. Uh, a term we use in journalism is called framing. So they definitely set that up. The, uh, a perfect way for it to go in their uh, direction. So another story that we talk a lot about on the show, the family of Tamir Rice, who was fatally shot by a Cleveland police officer in 2014 when he was 12 years old, is asking President Biden's Department of Justice to reopen an investigation into his death. Uh, attorneys representing Rice's family sent a letter to Attorney General Merrick Garland on Friday asking him to reopen the probe, which the Trump administration, as you know, officially closed last year. The family hopes that the DOJ will thoroughly investigate investigate the case and reconsider charging the officers involved in his death, according to The Hill. So uh, actually, I don't know if you guys remember, about a week ago, um, uh, Tamir Rice's mom spoke out against um, Tamika Mallory and was very upset. So we didn't get a chance to follow up on that. Tamika Mallory actually came back um, and said, I have no ill will, ill feelings about um, Tamir Rice's mother speaking out. She actually said, I support how she feels 100 percent and also says, as a nation, I think whenever a child, this goes into what we were just talking about, about Adam's story, as a nation, I think whenever a child or any person, but particularly a child dies or killed in this nation, we should have erupted. And so I just wanted to bring that back because a lot of people were wondering how Tamika Mallory felt about Tamir Rice's mom speaking out about, hey, you guys, you guys gave me the short end of the stick. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know how you guys feel, too. I feel like this happened in 2015. If this happened, sadly, it, it closer to what, ha you know, right, right about now. Tamir Rice's situation might have gotten more uh, publicity. I don't know how you guys feel about that. I mean, it's sad that we're talking about death here. But yeah. back in 2015, people just weren't, they just weren't, you know, going as hard as they were for, you know, uh, police killings of black lives as they are right now. And it's just sad that it, that, that it happened around the time that it did. Well, I think I, I kind of agree with you on that, Demi, because, you know, the family, I believe, got like six million dollars in. Right. You yeah. can't put a price on a life. Absolutely. Right? We know what they did to for George Floyd. He gets twenty seven million. So. Yeah. But again, it's not about the dollar amount. It's about a little kid that was playing in daylight at the park who had a toy pellet gun and was playing with snowballs. And if a police pulls up on the snow abruptly, he's going to react. But he's not going to know what to drop. Right. And he still should not be shot for that reason.
So again, it continues. Due process is supposed to be a thing in this country. And, yeah. you know, I can hear, I can understand, I think everyone can understand why she feels like, hey, I don't trust the Trump administration's Justice Department. This feels like it was done too quickly, and I would mm -hmm. like you to reopen it and look mm -hmm. into it. And, I, you know, I just have to note, because we have now talked about two recent police killings of children in Maryland. A 16-year-old was shot and killed by police also this week. And it turns out he was holding an airsoft gun, mm -hmm. which is reminiscent of this story. And that's under investigation at this point. But, you, you know, it, it, it's happening a lot. And so, you know, the question is, is this public safety? Yeah. Yeah. You know, true. do we keep it? What, what do we do? Right. You know? All right. Simon and Schuster says it will not distribute a book written by one of the Louisville police officers who shot Breonna Taylor. Louisville Police Sergeant Jonathan Mattingly wrote a book that is being published by Post Hill Press. And Post Hill Press is one of the smaller publishing houses of which Simon and Schuster provides third party distribution. Initially, the publishing giant released a statement saying it has no editorial control over the releases of those smaller houses. But after massive criticism and about face, with Simon & Schuster releasing the final statement saying, in part, we have subsequently decided not to be involved in the distribution of this book. And I just want to say, you know, cancel culture, protest things. It matters. Mm -hmm. It matters. Yeah. And uh, Kiese Lehman, one of the greatest writers of all time, he wrote a powerful book called Heavy. And if you haven't read it, you should. He's from Mississippi. He's just one of the greatest writers ever. He tweeted this, and I thought it was really powerful. He said, Scribner, where I publish is under Simon & Schuster. Donnie Walton and I, our family, know that. None of us had any clue Simon & Schuster distributed that. And he, cussed. he said, mm -hmm. if they don't break its distribution deal with any and all of those folk of terror... I am breaking my contract and walking. Mm. And it's statements like that and people who are willing to take their money and go, yes. take their power and go, yes. people yeah. who are speaking out that made this change. And so if this is something you want to see, you got to understand it. Yes. It's, it's not cancel culture. It's accountability. You yeah. know what? It's it's not cancel culture, Brooke. It's accountability. You're right. But it's also money. And money talks and everything else walks. And so also Common has a book under Simon & Schuster uh, called, it doesn't matter, but also uh, there's a book about Nipsey Hussle called The Marathon Don't Stop as well under Simon & Schuster. So I feel like a lot of people started, like you said, started you know threatening to pull their money. And they're like, hey, is it worth it? You know, when you're weighing it out, it's kind of like, because Simon & Schuster, they also put out a statement and said, you know, it will also be our mission to amplify everybody's voices but they also said at the same time we have to take seriously our larger public responsibility as citizens and so they probably got so much they got dragged on twitter pretty much so mm -hmm. they had to realize too is it worth it is one book worth dragging down our whole company and it's not no not at all